welcome to the next lecture of uh, this course logic for computer science and today we are going to see the syntax and parsing of propositional logic we call that I said that uh, in previous lecture that uh, we need formal description of logic and we have to be very rigorous such that we don't make mistakes and ill-defined logic so let's begin our journey to uh, define syntax of propositional logic. We need a quick method of identifying a group of symbols is a logical argument. I mean, if I give you a sequence of words or sequence of symbols, there should be some way of saying, yes, this is passes as a, a correct syntax. Maybe it means nothing or maybe it means absurd, but I can understand what is being tried to be said. We usually define a syntax and for example in, in English you have something called grammar and you, that if something does not fit the grammar then you say it is not English. So let us define a similar grammar or syntax for composition logic. So first thing logic is over a list of propositions. So they, in any context you are applying proposition logic you have a list of uh, statements uh, or propositions and your argument is over those propositions. So you need a priori list of propositions. For example, sky is blue, sun is hot or any list. It's not that important. So we don't care what each one says and each one of them we assign is symbol. Okay? So uh, we assume that there is a set of vars, okay, this set and which has countably many propositional variables and they represent some set of statements out there. Since this set is countable, what we can do, we can index each of these propositions. We can put them in an order P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. You may wonder why I want to do it. It will become clear by the end of uh, our discussion of propositional logic why indexing is relevant. The variables are just names and symbols without an inherent meaning. A P3 is not better than P2 and there is no difference between a P10 or P1000. Uh, it's just they are two distinct symbols. Sometimes we drop this subscript. We sometimes write P, Q, R, X, Y, Z to denote the propositional variable. So it's, it means the same thing. It's just the whole point is that whenever you take two different symbols, they mean two different uh, propositions in the out there in the world of real world. These propositional variables are also called Fourier variables, and uh, we will mostly stuck to propositional variables. But if you somewhere see that we are mentioning Boolean variables, uh, it's because of uh, that context. How generally community use these variables? So please let me uh, interchangeably use these two phrases: Boolean variables propositional variables. A logical argument connects the propositions. It, you connect them by conjunction, disjunction on some several ways. Let us list all the possible ways we can may want to connect these symbols. First thing, we should be able to talk about something is always true or something is always false. For example, an apple is an apple, which is always true. I mean, how can an apple not be an apple? So you should be able to express things like that. Or you can say something always false. For example, this statement, I like apple and I don't like apple. And clearly that cannot be true at the same time. So we, should, we may need a symbol to really represent something is always true or something is always false. Okay, so you need, you need a distinct, these two distinct symbols. Then another, so let's see how we can connect um, our propositions. One simple thing we can do is that if I give you a proposition, you say this is not true. So you can negate the proposition. You can say that two propositions are true at the same time. Or you can say that at least one of the two propositions are the true. <coughs> 
for example you can say that apple is not sweet so it is negating the statement that apple is sweet or you can say that apple is sweet and delhi is far so we have to take the two proposition and put them as a conjunction or you can say apple sweet or delhi is far so this is a uh, ways we may want to connect our propositions what else uh, we can do with proposition so yes there is uh, more ways of connecting them so let's go over them implication so maybe you want to say that if some proposition is true then some other proposition also become true that's called amp implication or you can have equivalence which said two propositions are true at the same time or false at the same time it cannot be the case one is true other one is false or the way down third is that uh, disequality when that means is truth values are in disagreement between two statements if one is true then other one must be false or other way around uh, this is you typically called exclusive or and sometimes it also refers to disequality so please uh, remember that this exclusive or and disequality uh, are the same thing so here is an example uh, in this two proposition i work and i make money i can put them together as an implication if i work then i make money uh, you can put them as an equivalent uh, to the statement in this example uh, i like an apple which is if and only if i like a pen so you just saying that these two statement must be true at the same time or false at the same time or you can say that a is here or b is here but both are not here so it is not that it's different from r it's not saying that both can be here at the same time okay so that makes it exclusive r okay so that's that's so this uh, there's a this is r in our syntax and then there's an exclusive r which basically and this allows both being true at the same time so question is is there any other way you can connect propositions in in logical words and apparently you think about it and uh, you may come back and say that uh, no it's not possible there is no other way we can connect this proposition you would be right and i can't think of any other way of connecting uh, uh, propositions and even if there is something they are all reducible to one of these constructions okay so uh, let's fix our these symbols and we'll see that uh, we don't need any more and we will formally prove that uh, so what are these symbols we have collected so far we need to to constants true and false we write them with these symbols we need negation which will use this symbol conjunction which will use like a wedge and disjunction which will use it like a v then there are three symbols which are called implication equivalent and exclusive we also need uh, parentheses for uh, basically uh, collecting the symbols and put them okay this is one chunk i'm putting aside and connecting with other some formulas so this is for punctuation purposes okay so note that the the first two symbols are zero array symbols they don't take any parameters unary symbol is only one which is a negation which takes another proposition as as a parameter conjunction disjunction implication equivalence and xor are binary symbol they take two propositions as parameters and these two are punctuation symbols we assume that the logical connectives are not in vars it will make no sense that they themselves represent a some specific proposition so that's assumption to you you put these uh, these symbols aside and uh, assume that that all the proposition are represented by some other set of symbols Okay, so this is basic assumption you need to make to really <laughs> grab or make sense. So a propositional formula is a finite string containing symbols in words and logical connectors. Okay, the only these symbols can appear in your propositional formula, and this formula belongs to this particular grammar defined by this definition. So how do we define it? We say that true and false are in the set P. If p is a variable belongs to vars then p itself can be said a string which is part of capital p if a formula is in p then you can just put a negation symbol in front and then you say it is belongs to p if o is a binary symbol remember there were five binary symbols 
conjunction, disjunction, implication, etc. And you have a two propositional formulas, then you can put them together like this. You can introduce an open parenthesis, close parenthesis, put them next to each other, and then you have a operation by doing something. And then you can say, if you can construct a string using these kind of operations, then that form, that thing, that string is called proposition formulas. If you know how to write formal grammars, this particular uh, definition can be written as a definition 2.2, when your f is defined as this grammar. So we say uh, true, false, and p as atomic formula. They cannot be subdivided. Can be the by definition is very clear. And for each formula f, let vars f. Okay, so vars f is, is basically if you give f to this this function vars, it returns the set of variables appearing in f. Okay? So the the way f is defined, remember that uh, f is 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 always a finite string in this definition. Okay, so uh, so this will always return a finite set of symbols. Just just for uh, understanding what the, what, uh, what strings are and what words are there. So let's uh, do an exercise and ask ourselves this question: Is this a formula or not? This is not a formula because whenever you do an implication, then you need to have a parenthesis, and this guy doesn't have a parenthesis. Therefore, this is not a formula. So if you add parenthesis, then this guy becomes a formula. Okay, so remember that you cannot write these things without parenthesis in, in right now. Okay, if you uh, write this. Is it a parent uh, formula or not? Notice that you have a negation sitting here. So do I need a parenthesis here or not? Uh, look at the definition back here, and you will find that uh, that when you apply negation, you don't introduce a parenthesis. Therefore, it's okay to do that. Okay. So what about this guy? Can you vacuously introduce parenthesis on it? You are only allowed to uh, in introduce uh, parentheses when you are constructing a formula for a binary symbol, and this is not we are doing. So therefore, this is not a formula. Is this a formula? Can you put arbitrary number of negations symbols in front of a variable? Yes, it is because it does not introduce any parentheses. So this is all good. So not all strings over vars and logical connectives are in p so you should be uh, some way if i give you a string you should be able to very quickly tell it belongs to p or not and that is something we will develop how to do it 